I can only assume you've never heard of a little island bunch called Antigua and Bermuda. Well, Antigua and Bermuda has three islands in its country. This little island is perfect for a Perfect for vacations, it has beaches and great food. Now, people usually think it's a U.S. owned island bunch, like the U.K. owns Bermuda, because the island requires no passport if you're from the U.S. or Canada. But this island is independent from any other country. This country could simply be called a constitutional monarchy, because there's a queen on the money. But this government is very different and unique. As I said, the government in Tangua and Bermuda is very strange and different. Constitutional monarchy. Constitutional monarchy is when a king or queen rules a country, but has a constitution. This is not the end of a very strange government. This government is a mixture of the government's representative document democracy, which is when a group of elected council under a major person. The other government is a polymeric system, in which there are three branches of government this government this creates a very unique system this system lets there be a, a high council president and a prime minister these people make the government that is the strangest i've ever seen the economy is not very strange despite the government the currency is the same as Enguigla, dominica grenada Montserrat, saint net and Nivis, St. Luca, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This currency is the East Caribbean dollar, which is one, which one East Caribbean dollar equals 0. 0.37 of a U.S. dollar. The GDP is not too high, though. If it was as high as the U.S., it would be massive that... In the, the GDP is 18,400 US dollars. The debt is 489 million. This is low compared to the US debt. From sandy beaches to rocky cliffs, Antigua is the modern day paradise. The people are full of history and the land is full of character. Everywhere you can find cars, shops, resorts, and kids playing sports. But Antigua wasn't always a blissful country. It took major changes to its history to get it to the way it is now. Those changes have helped Antigua and Barbuda to develop as a country. I want to focus on how Antigua and Barbuda's history changed the present. To answer this question, I must go back in time to the first inhabitants of Antigua, the natives. There were three types of natives to Antigua. The first natives were the Simini people. The earliest known artifacts found by the Simini were from 2400 BC. The Simini were very skilled. Archaeologists know them for their lithic technology, which is their unique skills. The Simini were artists. Some of the artifacts found were of beautiful shell and stone tools. Their culture consisted of hunting and gathering, yet farming was in their lives too. In fact, now the most popular view of the Simini is their culture farming cultures. Many traces of the Sibini can be found all over the Caribbean. The Sibini were a self-sufficient society, although after thriving on the island, they left it and moved on, or were overtaken by the next group of natives, the Arawaks. The Arawaks were the next people to inhabit the island nation of Antigua and Barbuda. They came from possibly Central America or South America. These people mainly lived in villages with up to 3,000. The Arawaks were agriculturists. They were skilled farmers creating a unique system called slash and burn, which is cutting down trees and then burning the brush. This created new land for the people and made ash, a key part in their homemade fertilizer. Although most of their lives had evolved around agriculture, the Arawaks hunted. It's mostly a small game, but it was a part of their culture. The Arawaks had a highly advanced government. Their government related to the democracy of the United States today. So far, there has been no evidence suggesting that any slaves or forced labor existed in their society. In the culture, they worshipped zemis, which are objects holding spiritual powers, and kakikis, which are the chiefs of villages. Many years passed, and then people called the Caribs took over Antigua. 
The Caros were a very aggressive people coming from South America. The Caros were war people. They kind of adapted to the Arawak style. For example, some of the artifacts found by the Caros related to those of the Arawak people. They were skilled in hunting, fishing, basket making, and farming. They hunted with bow and arrows, clubs, and traps. In their culture, two languages were spoken, Carib and Arawak. The men spoke Carib and the women spoke Arawak. This is because the women were kidnapped from the Arawak tribe by the Caribs for wives. They worshipped the spirit of their ancestors and were skilled craftsmen. They built canoes made from huge trees to get to other islands. They lived in Antigua until the Europeans came. The Europeans wiped them out by war and disease. In conclusion, each of the natives caused the, uh, uh, the other to change. Some of their actions changed the present. What if Antigua is democracy because of the Arawak people? We don't know that yet, but what we do know is all the natives were skilled people. The natives lived in Antigua for a long time. They thrived and survived there from around 2400 BC to around 1493. That is the year that Christopher Columbus made a second voyage to the Western Hemisphere. This time, he came down south to the Caribbean. While passing by the Lesser Antilles, he spied two tiny islands. Christopher claimed the islands for Spain. He named the islands after the church Santa Maria de la Antigua in Seville, Spain. Columbus didn't pay much attention to the, island, to the island, and not much changed. Finally, after 140 years, Englishmen from St. Kitts came. In 1632, Englishmen from St. Kitts came. They were the first group of people to form a successful settlement on Antigua. In 1684, Christopher Codrington came from Barbados. Sir Christopher Codrington was the first man to bring sugar cane to the island. Because Christopher Codrington was so successful with sugar cane, Antigua became a very important resource for the English. They called Antigua the gateway to the Caribbean. In that time, if you wanted to grow sugar cane, then you had slaves. That is exactly what Christopher did. He brought slaves to the island. Now over three quarters of the population are descendants of the slaves. Christopher was very successful on the island, but died in 1710. In order to keep Antigua as a key part in their gateway to the Caribbean, Hartio Nelson arrived in 1783. He came to pre preserve the commercial shipping on the island. In order to do this, Hartio built a dockyard called Nelson's Dockyard. Sadly, Hurtiel called the country a vile place and did not become a part of the construction. In 1887, Hurtiel left Antigua. The settlers came and went in Antigua. Some of them turned Antigua into a very successful little island, while others paid little attention to it. Overall, the settlers did, settlers did make a difference to Antigua. If Christopher Codrington decided not to have slaves, who knows what the island might look like. But Antigua's history didn't stop there. It is the 21st century, and a lot has happened since 1887. Earlier, I talked about the different settlers. So I was thought of historical events with one of the most important times in Antiguan history, 1834. 1834 was the year that Antigua was freed. In the beginning, plantation owners let children under six years old be freed and apprentice the others. In that time, apprentice was between being free and being a slave. This went on for a few months. But th then, plantation owners realized that it costed them more to house and feed apprentices than it was to just pay wages. So the plantation owners set the slaves free. 1958. This was the year that Antigua and Barbuda was sponsored by the British sponsor West Indies Fed Federation. The British sponsored West Indies Federation was to push the idea of self governing countries. It was aimed to establish a po po political union against its, among its members. Sadly, this federation did not last long, and in 1962, the federation collapsed, most likely because some of the countries had developed their own government. 1981. It had taken many years for Antigua to gain independence. Many of its prime ministers had tried hard for it to become independent. Finally, on November 1st, 1981, Antigua and Barbuda was declared an independent country. The prime minister at the time was Viri Bird, who sealed the independence through the Commonwealth of Nations. Finally, for the first time in 328 years, the Union Jack, 
was lowered and replaced with an Antiguan flag. To this day, every year, November is still celebrated as Independence Day. Through Antigua's history, many many things changed the present. Christopher Codrington bringing slaves, Antiguan Rebuilding becoming independent, and natives leaving artifacts. All of these events have caused something to change the present. Could be as big as a new settler, or as small as someone having a baby. But everything has affected another person, and, that, and a different person, and another person, and so on. So no matter what anyone does, the future is affected.